Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a Wolfenstein 3D FPS clone in Unity and welcome to episode 2. In this tutorial we're going to take a look at bringing in some textures specifically for our floor and our wall that we've already created. We'll take a look at materials and we'll also discuss why we use seamless textures especially in this style of game. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon as well to stay up to date with the rest of this series and everything else I have on my channel. And with that in mind, let's get to work. So the way textures work in Unity and how we apply them to, let's say, these objects, is the texture goes onto something called a material. And then that material then goes onto these objects. So although we're using textures, they don't directly go onto these objects. The material is like a proxy. So what we'll do is we'll bring in some textures and we can drag and drop into this window here. But before we do, let's create a folder so we keep everything neat and tidy. So down here in the asset window, right click, create, folder, call it textures. Hit enter to go into the folder. And now I'm going to drag and drop these three textures into Unity down here. And you can get these on the website, which is in the description below. Head over there, go to downloads and assets, find the Wolfenstein section, and you can download these under episode two. And it's worth noting as well, they come in a zipped file, so just unzip that file and zip these out of the file because for some reason you can't drag and drop from a zipped file into Unity. A lot of people do have that problem, so make sure you take them out of there. So, remember when I said that textures don't directly go onto these objects? We can actually drag and drop this texture onto this object right here, but something will happen when we do. So drag and drop. And yes, the texture is now applied. However, we now have this automatic folder that's been created called materials. And if we click on this object, you'll notice down here in the inspector panel, we now have a material attached to this object. If we were to click on the wall, we'll see there's nothing here. It's all grayed out because there's nothing attached to it. But this is the material that's attached. And this can be found under materials with the same name as what our texture is. So let's modify this material to give ourselves a little bit of a better look. Because at the moment it's kind of stretched, it's kind of flat, it's kind of boring. And there's a couple of things that we can do to make this look a little better. So firstly, what we'll do is we'll actually duplicate the texture that we've originally created. So this ground 001, if we click on it and hold control and press D, just like we did for this wall up here in the last tutorial, it will duplicate down here and rename itself to whatever you have here. So if you've got the same one I'm using, it will change it to ground 002. What we're going to do is F2 to rename, change it back to ground 001, underscore n and this n stands for normal map we're going to use normal maps in this to give a better looking texture and a normal map is basically a way of using the light within the scene to help it improve the graphic quality so let's use this now and go over here and where we have texture type drop down this list and click on normal map you'll have an option here create from grayscale I'm not going to use this just yet, but it is something I'll explain a little later in this tutorial. Just click apply and it will turn into kind of a, a light purpley kind of color. We can now apply this to this uh, material to make it look better. Now we can either modify the material here directly on the object itself, or we can do it all through the actual material itself. The component is going to be exactly the same and anything we apply on the material here will automatically apply to this material here. So firstly, let's apply that normal map into here. And we can do that by making sure we have the actual material selected and we can still see it here. And then drag and drop that normal map onto this little square right here. We should see a change almost instantly. It now looks a little glossier. So this normal map is now applied here. The light now reflects on it a little more. It kind of helps it, gives it a bit of a bump to see. Basically, if we turn the light off, it would, it would change again. So let's make this even better now. So we've originally played with the material through the material itself in this folder. Let's now change it on the actual object itself. So. If we were to slide the metallic option all the way up, 
you would see the kind of effect it's now having on this particular texture. Same with the smoothness, if we were to play around with it, you would see the different options that you have. So hold control, press Z to undo. If we change the source to albedo alpha, once again, it will increase everything we have and we can decrease the smoothness as well as the metallic look of it. But one thing we are going to do here is we're going to make this look a little better because the tiling right here is one by one. Realistically, all it's doing is stretching this entire texture over the entire object. To change that, let's have this by about four and four. So let's change the tiling to four by four. And you'll see it kind of stops that stretching and pixelated look on the texture and it doesn't look as bad as it did. So now let's go back to this ground 001 normal map. And over here where I said it has an option to create from grayscale, tick that option and then click apply. And you'll see what happens to that texture. It gives it a very vivid, sharp, shiny kind of look. And we can always modify that now by going here in normal map and changing this number. If you have your mouse in this section beside the number, you'll see a slider appear. So if you hold down your left mouse button, you can change one way or the other how that normal map affects. Generally, it's a good idea to keep it between zero and one because somewhere between that range is an acceptable look of that object. So let's have it as 0 0.2 for now, in fact, 0 0.3. And we could also play around with the metallic look if we wanted to, and the smoothness, once again, if we wanted to. So I'm gonna bring the smoothness quite low to about there. And we can already see just how this texture and material is now having an impact on the object itself. So because this is going to be based on uh, the Wolfenstein 3D game from many, many years ago, I'm going to bring it into the modern world and I want it to still have that retro look, but I want it to also have a modern look. So I'm going to mix the two together in a weird kind of way and see what I come up with. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to apply this wall onto here, but we're not going to drag and drop directly onto here. We're going to create the material from scratch. So if we go into our materials folder, right click, create, and down here you'll see material. So let's create this material and call it wall 001. And the same way we did with the normal map, we can drag and drop the texture into this top albedo section. So wall 001, drag and drop into there. And now, same way as we did with the texture, we dragged and dropped onto here. Let's drag and drop this material onto this object. And we can see this wall looking nice now. So what I'll do now is I will take this wall texture and I will apply the normal map for it. So back to textures, take wall 001, hold control, press D again, F2 to rename. Let's have it wall 001 underscore N. Again, N is for normal map. So texture type, change to normal map, click on create from grayscale and click apply. And now let's apply that onto our wall right here drag and drop and already we can see how much of an impact it's had on our wall so once again we can play around let's change it to albedo alpha let's drag the metallic right up and we can see just how metallic it's looking it does not look like a wall anymore we can see the reflection of our skybox the whole way now that is not realistically a good idea, even though it probably is for this particular object, it certainly isn't for this one. So in that instance, let's take this and let's bring the metallic all the way down and bring the smoothness down as well. And now let's change the normal map to, let's say 0.5. And we can see, yeah, it's starting to give us a nicer kind of look more akin to what we would expect to see in a Wolfenstein game. And I guess it is up to you if you want to give it a realistic look, if you want to look for more realistic textures, if you want to go for that style, then you do. You know, there's nothing stopping you going for the textures you want to go for. I'm using these as the example for this series. So if I take this normal map, untick create from grayscale and click on apply, you will see 
how much of an effect that has. It gives it that flat look. But again, there's nothing stopping you working with the actual material itself to change how this looks. So I'm going to keep it as grayscale. There we go. And now I'm going to explain how and why we use seamless textures. So a seamless texture is referred to something as it can be duplicated one after the other without it looking weird, i.e. it's got a bit of a line in it because it's cut from one to the next. So what seamless means is if we take this wall, hold control, press D and bring it next to it, it flows perfectly along. So it looks as though it is basically one big object. And again, because the style of game that we're going for here, this is going to be absolutely perfect for us because it gives us the impression of how these Wolfenstein games are supposed to look. So the last thing I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to use this texture as well to create the blue wall along here. And we're going to play with that one a little more. We're going to do something a little differently with that material. So I'm going to take this one right here, hold control, press D, and bring it over here. And you can see that these don't quite align. So what we can do is rotate this object on the Y axis. You can see if you rotate it like that, that's all good and well, but we need to rotate it by exactly 90 degrees. And now it looks a little bit more fitting. It's up to you if you would want to do that with it, considering we're going to change the actual uh, wall style. So if you would want it to carry on around like that as a normal wall, then you would do just that. You'd be able to, no problem. So this effect will go on and on and on and on, and all the way, you know, until where you want it to stop. So we're going to change the texture on these two walls now. So drag and drop, wall onto there. And now let's change this around. So if we go here to our material, let's create the normal map for it actually first, it would help. So that's going to be wall 002 underscore n. Let's create that into a normal map, grayscale, apply, and then let's apply that straight onto here. And yes, already you can see this does look a little different, but that's entirely up to you. Maybe I should actually have these set like this, which just means a case of changing this to metallic alpha. Mm, doesn't make too much of a difference. I guess we'll stick with albedo. Uh, albedo. And I'm going to have this as 0.5. So this one now, what we can do is, although this is a blue wall, it's not necessarily giving us the blue effect that we would want, given the lighting conditions. So what we can do is click this little white section next to the albedo, and let's change it to blue. And we can see, perfect. That looks more like it, what it would be in these Wolfenstein 3D games. So I'm quite happy to keep it that dark blue color. Let's get rid of this one, hold control, press D, duplicate, and we can see that the seamless effect still carries on even with this texture. Same with the floor, this one is also seamless, so it will also carry on exactly as you would expect. So what we could do now is because we're snapping things together, we don't necessarily need the wall here to intersect with the floor. So we can give ourselves more space by pulling this floor out and we will never be able to see between that gap there because they are flush against each other. Uh, one more thing to note as well, I've got these blocks quite large and the reason I have them quite large is because it gives us more of a way to have a wall which looks flush with itself. And again, I think it's up to you how you want to display this wall because there's no set way of doing this really. You can have it looking like this, you could have it looking completely different well, it just gives us the effect if we duplicate the floor, uh, bring that to there, and bring that to there. So now we have a little bit of an area that we can wander around in for our game. So, next tutorial, what we're going to take a look at is we'll look at level design. So we'll design this section of our level, we'll work with more textures and we'll get it looking a little better. We'll also work a little with lighting as well because I think lighting is vital in a game, any game for that matter. And we'll also look at bringing in a character to walk around with. So guys, until that next tutorial, thank you very much for watching.